This is C-SPAN's First Ladies in Their Own Words podcast, listening to the voices of eight modern first spouses. In this episode, you'll hear from the 45th First Lady, Melania Trump. Born Melania Knauss in 1970, she is the second First Lady born outside the United States and the first non-native English speaker. Louisa Adams, wife of John Quincy Adams, was born in London in 1775. A native of Slovenia, Melania grew up in Nova Mesto, a town close to the Croatian border. The future first lady began modeling at the age of five, and by the time she was 18, had signed with a modeling agency in Milan. After finishing high school, she studied art and design for one year at university before pursuing modeling full-time. She moved to New York in 1996, where she met real estate developer Donald Trump at a party in 1998. The two married in 2005 and had one child, Baron Trump, born in 2006. That same year, Melania Trump became a naturalized U.S. citizen. During her time in the White House, Mrs. Trump focused her public work on her Be Best initiative, which focused on the well-being of youth and advocated against cyberbullying and drug use. We begin with Melania Trump meeting with middle school students in the White House's Blue Room in 2018. Really a pleasure to welcome the First Lady of the United States here with us. Good afternoon. Welcome to the White House. I'm very excited that you're here today with me and thank you in advance for sharing your stories and your thoughts about your struggles and trials. I want to help children everywhere to be their best. So with your help, we can achieve positive results. So before we start, I would like to ask each of you to introduce yourselves and then we could start and maybe share some hobbies or the story that you want to share with me. Uh, as we see here, we have uh, two boards. On, on my right, I put down some of the words that we need to live by in everyday life. And uh, on the left, we have a board that is empty. And what I would like is have three of you to come up and maybe share your emotions, how you feel, maybe in school, how you feel at home or with your peers. So we could have that discussion and you tell me your thoughts and I will tell you my thoughts. So maybe I could be the first one and tell you what I feel today. Is that good? Yes, perfect. So, I feel today very excited and thankful because you are here and we're opening up the conversation. Yes? So, I will put it down, excited. So, who will want to be next up? That was Melania Trump meeting with middle school students in the White House Blue Room. Born in Slovenia, Mrs. Trump was the first First Lady who became a naturalized U.S. citizen. You'll hear in her own words here on American History TV how she experienced her four years as First Lady, featuring footage from C-SPAN's video library. First, you'll hear Melania Trump talk about her signature initiative, Be Best, on its one-year anniversary. Helping children succeed, as she put it, was her first priority as First Lady. I always said as a mother and first lady. It concerns me that today's fast pace and ever connected world can make children less prepared to express or manage their emotions, causing them to turn to forms of destructive actions such as bullying, unhealthy habits, risky online behavior, drug abuse, and addiction, or even suicide. One year ago today, I announced Be Best, an awareness campaign dedicated to the children of this country and all over the world. Be Best has three pillars, the well-being of children, online safety, and opioid abuse. And it continues to have one goal, which is to educate children and parents about the issues they face and promote programs and services available to help them with today's challenges. My office has spent the past year listening to and learning from children, parents, medical professionals, teachers, leaders in technology and social media, 
and many others who have a stake in vital issues that can affect the next generation. In fact, this past year has shown me that children are vulnerable to more than just social media, and I so expanded one of my pillars to online safety. I look forward to using BeBest to promote any digital programs that make online safety and digital citizenship a priority in today's technology-driven world. I have also expanded my focus of the dangers of opioid abuse to include kids of all ages and will continue to work with partner agencies to highlight and promote the programs and the resources available for all who struggle with addiction. Since announcing Be Best, I have visited schools and hospitals and visited 15 states to promote and highlight some of the successful work being done by so many on behalf of children. I have participated in children's events, including speaking engagements focused on one or more of the pillars of Be Best. I have the opportunity to meet with more than 30 foreign diplomats, head of state, of spouses, to exchange ideas on the challenges children are facing all over the world, and have hosted or participated in 18 writing ta tables and policy briefings. I'm also proud to reconvene the interagency working group on youth programs in order to build upon the good work being done by our agencies and the government. I travel internationally to nine countries, including my solo trip to Africa, where I partners, partnered with USAID to visit beautiful countries of Ghana, Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt to speak with children about Be Best and also educate myself about the different cultures and challenges with each community. While in Africa, I felt it was important that people throughout the continent and world understand that the United States cares. It is a fact that our own country is safer and stronger when people across the globe have opportunity, when our trading partners are flourishing, when nations around the world could withstand crisis, and when societies are freer and more democratic. As part of her efforts on behalf of the nation's youngest children, the First Lady hosted a White House meeting of the President's Task Force on Health Services for Native American Children. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I know that many of you have traveled far, but I'm grateful that you have made time to be with us today and carry out the work the president asked you to do as member of the task force on protecting Native American children in the Indian health service system. One of the pillar of my Be Best initiative is children well-being. And when I look around this room, I see so many people who have made the well-being of children their lives work. As you know, the Indian Health Service is an important part of America's healthcare, and I know that many IHS staff are passionate about their mission and the communities they serve. However, systematic problems can put children at risk, and I share the President's commitment to making sure the Indian Health Service uses best practices to keep children safe. Native American children, like all children, deserve to grow up in a safe, supportive, nurturing environment. Strong Native American communities are strong American communities. I look forward to learning about your work and what you have found, and I thank you again for your willingness to ask difficult questions in order to protect children. I thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning. We would welcome the opportunity to clarify anything or, or answer any questions about what it is that we saw on the ground. Thank you. Uh, thank you all very much uh, for your work that you are doing. And I'm so impressed by how thoughtful you have been with your report. Um, and I know that this work will help to keep children safe. I'm so glad that you have taken the time to work hand in hand with uh, tribal leaders uh, during this process and to listen to their input. 
You're listening to First Ladies in Their Own Words, and we'll be right back. President Trump's border policies were among the most controversial of his administration. So the First Lady's 2018 visit to a Texas shelter for migrant children was newsworthy. She was accompanied there by Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm glad I'm here and I'm looking forward to seeing and meeting children. But first of all, uh, let me begin to recognize each of you and thanking you for all what you do, uh, for your heroic work uh, that you do every day and uh, what you do for those children. We all know they're having, they're here without their families. And uh, I want to thank you for your hard work, your compassion, and your kindness you're giving them in these difficult times. I'm here to learn about your facility and which I know you house children on a long-term basis. And I also like to ask you how I can help to these children to reunite with their families. So when the children come here, what kind of stage, uh, you know, physical and mental stage they come here? Do are they distract? So what you would say, the percentage, how they come here? Well, no clinician. Okay. So usually um, the great majority are Guatemalan. It's a, it's a higher percentage rate. Um, usually when they get here, they're very distraught. And How long is the the time that the max time that somebody spent here that they were reunited with the family? Uh, right now we are averaging currently 42 to 45 days. Okay. So uh, these children, most of them come here alone without parents That's because right. they are between 12 and 17 years old, right? So yes, it's yes. kind of, they kind of understand and they know. Yes, ma'am. Where they are. Yes, ma'am. They are not like young, young children. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. The First Lady briefly addressed U.S. troops at a naval air station in Italy following a 2017 overseas trip to the Middle East and Europe. incredible trip and a great strides have been made. My husband worked very hard on behalf of our country and I'm very proud of him. This trip has also been incredible for me as First Lady. In Saudi Arabia, I visited children at local school and a call center with the all-female employees. In Israel, I spent time with some children at Hadash Medical Center along with Mrs. Netanyahu. In Rome, I was honored and blessed to be granted an audience with His Holiness, Pope Francis, followed by a very special visit to Bambino Gesù Children's Hospital. Just hours after leaving, a young boy I spent time with find out he had received a new heart donor. Receiving that news is a moment I will never forget, and I wish him a speedy recovery. In Brussels, I met with Queen Matilda and participated in a forum on preventing the online exploitation of children, then paid a visit to the patients at Queen Fabiola's Children's Hospital. This trip for me has been very special and I will never forget the women and children I met. As one of the kids at the hospital that I visit, in a picture 
he drew for me. We are all the same. I also want to take a moment to thank you all for the sacrifices you make on behalf of our country. It is because of your selfless commitment that we enjoy the freedoms we have today. And to the families who endure time apart or constant moves to the base, your sacrifices do not go unnoticed or unappreciated. Thank you and God bless you. And now it is my great honor to introduce my husband, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Modern First Ladies devote time and attention to the preservation of the White House and work closely with the private nonprofit White House Historical Association, established by First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. Melania Trump talked about that partnership at a May 2019 dinner. Good evening. Please sit down. The President and I are delighted to be with you, all of you this evening as we celebrate the incredible work of the White House Historical Association over this past year and prepare for our continued work to preserve and restore the People's House in the years to come. I want to recognize and thank members of the Association's Board of Directors who have joined us this evening, President Stewart McLaren, Chairman Fred Ryan, and Vice Chairman John Rogers. Your entire team has been incredible to work with, and that is a statement to your leadership and vision. I would also like to thank Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, and his wife, Hillary, for being here and for your continued support. The White House Historical Association has been a real partner with my office over the past two years, helping to found, preserve, and promote the important history and timeless beauty of the White House. Our family is grateful to live in this true symbol of our nation's history, but we are even more honored to play a part in restoring and enhancing our country's sacred landmark. It is only with the support and commitment of historical association that we are able to continue the tradition of protecting this home and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to work with all of you. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. This is an evening I look forward to for each year. You're listening to First Ladies in Their Own Words, and we'll be right back. As the fall 2020 presidential campaign was underway, the First Lady traveled to Pennsylvania on behalf of her husband, President Donald Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and privilege to welcome to the stage our First Lady, Melania Trump. Pennsylvania. Thank you all for the very warm welcome. And to our friend Congressman Smucker for joining us today. We love you. I love you too. Thank you. Before I begin, thank you for all the love and support you gave us when our family was diagnosed with COVID-19. We are all feeling so much better now, thanks to healthy living and some of the amazing therapeutic options available 
in our country. Thank you again for your well wishes. Since early this year, our country has felt the effects of global pandemic. Like many of you, I have experienced the first-hand effects of COVID-19, not only as a patient, but as a worried mother and wife. I know there are many people who have lost loved ones or know people who have been forever impacted by this silent enemy. My family's thoughts and prayers are with all of you through this difficult time. We all know the American spirit is stronger than this virus. We have proven that we can and will overcome this unexpected challenge. Amen. Thank you to all who have stepped up and helped in this uncertain time. To the frontline workers, teachers, healthcare professionals, and many more, my husband and I are grateful to you. You continue to make a difference every single day. Such selfless service is what our American values are all about. It is amazing to see the way we as Americans have come together in this time of need through the passionate and careful work being done in our communities, cities, and states all across our beautiful and powerful country, we will tri triumph over this virus. <laughs> Donald is a fighter. He loves this country and he fights for you every single day. For the first time in history, the citizens of this country get to hear directly and instantly from their president every single day through social media. I do not always agree with the way he says things, but it is important to him that he speaks directly to the people he serves. This administration chooses to keep moving forward during this pandemic, not backward. By moving forward, we demonstrate a fundamental value of our nation, our ability to rise to any challenge and overcome any hurdle. We do not close down or hide in fear. We get to work to find real and lasting solutions. It's what sets up apart from any other country in the world. The Republican National Convention was mostly a virtual event in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. First Lady Melania Trump delivered the convention's keynote address on the second night from the White House Rose Garden. She gave an immigrant's perspective on what it means to be an American. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the First Lady of the United States, Mrs. Melania Trump. Like just yesterday that we were at our first convention 
where my husband accepted the Republican nomination and then became our 43th President of the United States. Yet the energy and enthusiasm for who should lead this nation, it is real today as it was four years ago. I know I speak for my husband and the entire family when I say we have not forgotten the incredible people who were willing to take a chance on the businessmen who had never worked in politics. We know it was you who elected him to be commander-in-chief, and we know it is you who will carry us through again. We were humbled by the incredible support then, and we are still grateful today. I want to acknowledge the fact that since March, our lives have changed drastically. The invisible enemy, COVID-19, swept across our beautiful country and impacted all of us. My deepest sympathy goes out to everyone who has lost a loved one, and my prayers are with those who are ill or suffering. I know many people are anxious and some feel helpless. I want you to know you are not alone. My husband's administration will not stop fighting until there is an effective treatment or vaccine available to everyone. Donald will not rest until he has done all he can to take care of everyone impacted by this terrible pandemic. I want to extend my gratitude to all of the healthcare professionals, frontline workers and teachers who stepped up in these difficult times. Despite the risk to yourselves and your own families, you put our country first, and my husband and I are grateful. I have been moved by the way Americans have come together in such an unfamiliar and often frightening situation. It is in times like this that we will look back and tell our grandchildren that through kindness and compassion, strength and determination, we were able to restore the promise of our future. Speaking of strength and determination, we recently celebrated the 100-year anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment. Yesterday, on the North Lawn of the White House, we unveiled an exhibit dedicated to women's suffrage. The exhibit called on children from across the country to send art honoring the meaning of this important time in women's history. When I was judging the entries, I reflected on the impact of women's voices in our nation's story and how proud I will be to cast my vote again for Donald this November. We must make sure that women are heard and that the American dream continues to thrive. Growing up as a young child in Slovenia, which was under communist rule at the time, I always heard about an amazing place called America, a land that stood for freedom and opportunity. As I grew older, it became my goal to move to the United States and follow my dream of working in the fashion industry. My parents worked very hard to ensure our family could not only live and prosper in America, but also contribute to a nation that allows for people to arrive with a dream and make it reality. I want to take the moment to thank my mother and father for all they have done for our family. It is because of you that I'm standing here today. I arrived in the United States when I was 26 years old. Living and working in the land of opportunity was a dream come true, but I wanted more. I wanted to be a citizen. After 10 years of paperwork and patience, I studied for the test 
in 2006 and became an American citizen. It is still one of the proudest moments in my life because with hard work and determination, I was able to achieve my own American dream. As an immigrant and a very independent woman, I understand what a privilege it is to live here and to enjoy the freedoms and opportunities that we have. As First Lady, I have been fortunate to see the American dream come true over and over again. I have met many inspiring women, children, parents, and families who have overcome life-changing issues that include addiction, homelessness, family members who are ill or have passed away, abuse of all kinds, and many other challenges that would make most people give up. The past three and a half years have been unforgettable. There are no words to describe how honored, humbled, and fortunate I am to serve our nation as your First Lady. As we close out our program on Melania Trump, you'll hear her 2021 farewell address as she prepared to leave the White House in January. In this video message posted to Twitter, she talks about her work and the Americans she met as First Lady. As she delivers her parting words on the unfolding COVID-19 pandemic, urging caution, common sense, and compassion. My fellow Americans, it has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as First Lady of the United States. I have been inspired by incredible Americans across our country who lift up our communities through their kindness and courage, goodness and grace. The past four years have been unforgettable. As Donald and I conclude our time in the White House, I think of all of the people I have taken home in my heart and their incredible stories of love, patriotism, and determination. I see the faces of brave young soldiers who have told me with their pride in their eyes how much they love serving this country. To every service member and to our incredible military families, you are heroes, and you will always be in my thoughts and prayers. I think of all of the members of law enforcement who greet us everywhere we go. At every hour of every day, they stand guard to keep our community safe, and we are forever in their depth. I have been moved by children I have visited in hospitals and foster care centers. Even as they fight difficult illnesses or face challenges, they bring such a joy to everyone they meet. I remember the mothers who have battled the disease of opioid addiction and have overcome incredible hardships for love of their children. I have been inspired by the devoted caregivers for babies born with neonatal absence syndrome and communities that give these children the support and care they need to grow. When I think about these meaningful experiences, I'm humbled to have had the opportunity to represent a nation with such kind and generous people. As the world continues to confront the COVID-19 pandemic, I thank all of the nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals, manufacturing workers, truck drivers, and so many others who are working to save lives. We grieve for the families who have lost a loved one due to the pandemic. Every life is precious, and I ask all Americans to use caution and common sense to protect the vulnerable, as millions of vaccines are now being delivered. In the midst of hardship, we have seen the best of America shine through. Students have made cards and delivered groceries to our senior citizens. Teachers have worked twice as hard to keep our children learning. Families have come together to provide meals, supplies, comfort, and friendship to those in need. Be passionate in everything you do, but always remember that violence is never the answer, 
and will never be justified. When I came to the White House, I reflected on the responsibility I have always felt as a mother to encourage, give strength, and teach values of kindness. It is our duty as adults and parents to ensure that children have the best opportunities to lead fulfilling and healthy lives. The passion for helping children succeed has driven my policy initiatives as First Lady. I launched Be Best to ensure that we as Americans are doing all we can to take care of the next generation. Be Best has concentrated on three pillars, well-being, online safety, and opiate abuse. In a few short years, I have raised awareness of how to keep children safe online. We have made incredible progress on our nation's drug epidemic and how it impacts the lives of newborns and families. And we have given a voice to our most vulnerable children in their foster care system. Internationally, Be Best has evolved into a platform that encourages world leaders to discuss issues impacting the lives of children and allows them to share solutions. It has been an honor to represent the American people abroad. I treasure each of my experiences and the inspiring people I have met along the way. As I say farewell to my role as First Lady, it is my sincere hope that every American will do their part to teach our children what it means to be best. I encourage parents to educate your children about the courageous and selfless heroes who worked and sacrificed to make this country the land of the free and to lead by example and care for others in your community. The promise of this nation belongs to all of us. Do not lose sight of your integrity and values. Use every opportunity to show consideration for another person and build good habits into your daily lives. In all circumstances, I ask every American to be an ambassador of Be Best, to focus on what unites us, to raise above what divides us, to always choose love over hatred, peace over violence, and others before yourself. Together, as one national family, we can continue to be the light of hope for future generations and carry on America's legacy of rising our nation to greater heights through our spirit of courage, goodness, and faith. No words can express the depth of my gratitude for the privilege of having served as your First Lady. To all the people of this country, you will be in my heart forever. Thank you for joining us for Melania Trump in her own words. All eight programs in our series, First Ladies in Their Own Words, from Lady Bird Johnson to Melania Trump, are available at cspan.org for you to watch at your own convenience. Okay.